I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, as is usual on a 3v3 ladder map, we have the uh, cold team facing off against the hot team. The map is a pretty interesting one and we'll talk about it in a moment, but first of all, let's meet the players. First up for cold team, this is Vet. 1153 rated, Cybron in Mauve. Behind him, in the rearguard position, Stalker Brony, 1317 rated, Seraphim in dark blue, and he has opened first air, which could be an interesting little play. First air mechs, no immediate power, that's interesting. And up here in the flank for Code Team, we have Don Gringo, 1366 rated, also Seraphim, in baby blue. Facing off against them. Down here, we have Eco Player 7, whom we saw quite recently. He's 1204 rated, he's Cybron, and he's orange. In the rearguard position for Hot Team, this is Sea Star, 1297 rated, UEF in Burgundy. And last but not least, up here in the flank position, this is Raxata, who is 1363 rated, also UEF in red. And now the map. Well, isn't this an odd one? The first thing I see is, doesn't it look like a cow to you? We've got these ears out here, the horns, the eyes, and the jawline coming around here. See? It's a cow. Now, one thing that isn't immediately obvious is that it is just about possible for units to get up here on land and creep their way across, but it's a slow and arduous process. As for the map itself, we've got one expansion each for the back players here. We've got a slightly smaller expansion for the flank player here. Nice little plateau, which is only accessible by air, up here. And then quite a lot of mechs is down here at the bottom, which I'm expecting Vet and Eco to be contesting. So, unusual shape. Let's see how the players read it. Eco is immediately sending out a tank and a scout to pick up this area around here, or if not pick it up, then at least defend it. And I like that play. Make sure that Vet doesn't get free Eco before Eco's ready to go out there. I would be expecting a drop or two, and this air factory from Eco, I would be putting engineers out here as soon as possible. Same for Vet, but Vet hasn't yet built an air factory, so he's obviously not planning that. Early expansions going about the same, nobody particularly greedy. I do see a drop coming out from Don here. Where is he going with it? Well, he's just using it to expand. He's dropping them all here. I don't know if that were necessary. I think it would have been quicker to walk. But I guess he has got the transport now to use on other things. And he's also got a bomber, which is heading for the opposing expansion. Is he going to try and pick up this? The bomb goes down and goes for the mechs. It cancels it, but the mechs isn't expensive. The NG's still there. And the bomber's just going to get shot down for no actual kills, so I don't like that a great deal. I think that was a wasted bomber. Eco's still only got the one tank and scout out here, compared to a little more coming down from Vet, but Eco's also got a gunship. A Tech 1 Cyber and Gunship a Jester. And that will presumably make the difference between these tanks winning and losing, unless we do have Brony bringing in some air support to take out the Jester. 
up here. Laxauta and Dawn engaging, both are taking damage. Lax pushing a little harder than Dawn, but that of course means that Dawn's spam will be nearer to reinforce. And indeed, Lax has almost no spam at all, so I think he will be forced to fall back as soon as any of these tanks from Dawn make it into the mix. They're both well into the yellow. Brony, meanwhile, is dropping this central plateau, which as well as having a couple of mechs on it, though the plateau itself has almost no reclaim. The reclaim is scattered evenly about the map. It will be a nice position to set up a firebase and perhaps defensive positions for anti-air. And he's starting off with a land factory to make sure that counter drops are easily picked up. Lax has been forced to fall back a bit, but he's bringing spam in and Don hasn't chosen to push. So I don't think we're going to see anything other than a nice even dividing line here, at least for a little while. Counter drop from Eco lands on the middle plateau there with more mexes and he starts on a point defence but Brony is on point and he's just going to reclaim all the NGs before they can get anything done. Lovely almost or Is he going to notice the last one? Yes. Lovely play from Brony picks up the counter drop before it can achieve anything. Down here at the bottom Eco has had his little exploratory defence easily swept aside by the spam from Ved, but Eco is bringing his own com out and putting up more land factories, and com beats T1 spam, so we'll see if Eco can take this area back. Looks like Vet is developing it faster though, with engineers already down here getting the mixes done, while Eco is still back here. Don has shipped NGs in to assist his com getting the gun upgrade, whereas Lax is still naked and hasn't started anything yet, so Don could have the advantage there. I a sparky drop, says C Star. I a sparky drop. Are you getting that tingling feeling down there as he says those words? Yes, you are. Don't deny it. Lax also is going to go for the gun, but the Dawn is well ahead and is finishing his as we speak. Dawn has also managed a sneaky drop over here, which might pick up several mexes from Lax if he isn't fast enough to spot it. One mix down, and he isn't. Look, these guys are just still just heading up here. Is this supposed to be a response? Maybe, but three mixes down for Lax, and as soon as he sees movement coming nearby, Don drives away. We'll see if he gets any more done. He could pick up this NG, which would be nice. Meanwhile, the Sparkies are loaded up. Sea Star living up to his promise. Don does indeed pick up an NG. His attack is Pung. But here go the Sparkies. Eco is also getting done, and he's also beginning to mass some spam, so when he's done, he'll be able to push pretty well against Vet over here. Vet has also brought his com up, and he's already got guns, so he might be in for a nice big face-off. But, I think you know where we have to be looking right now. Where is that sparky drop going? He's got a shield queued up here for as soon as he lands, so I think we can see what the plan is. Shield, probably a couple of point defences and then T2 point defence to clear up this area. Now Sparkies are more expensive than regular NGs and they have fewer templates but as well as having little guns on them they have more build speed and down it goes. Is the shield going to go up? T1 point defence is first and the Sparkies are cleaning up the point defences as they're being built with their own little guns while their construction is being used on these T1 point defences immediately followed by T2. This is brutal my dudes and it's going to be great. The paraphrase Dante in the Divine Comedy 
Poco Favaluccia Gran Fiamma Seconda, a tiny sparky, is followed by a great flame, and here is the great flame. Many triads, many T1 point defences, a shield to protect them, and this is absolutely mashing Don Gringo's eco, his base, down goes his HQ. This is, this is brutal. Brody coming in to try and help. Meanwhile, down in the south, Eco player pushing in and his comm will easily mash this spam. But Vet is also getting nano repair, so we have to be a little careful. Um, nano and gun and stealth versus only gun. And roughly equal amounts of spam. Though I am seeing a bit of T2 in the mix for Eco. We'll check back on them later. Brony, up here. He hasn't decided to push in because he will just die to that, no question. But he has got a T2 engineer building point defences with which to respond. There's a TMO in there as well, which the um, Spark is assisting, and they do have a bit of radar, but I don't think it's enough to see this far. And he's also put up factories from which regular engineers are coming, they'll be able to build their own radar, they'll be able to reclaim all of this, which is nice. I mean, the Sparkies can reclaim too, but these are more expendable. And Brony opens up on the expansion with his point defence, but it's seen and targeted, and this is shield, this isn't, it's going to go down. But I think we're going to have to split screen to check on both these things at once. So here on the left, Eco and Vet are going at it. Eco has less immediately present but he's got more coming up including T2. Vet has the nano. That TML is firing here on the right and is it going to claim a mech? Yes it is. A T2 mech goes down to the TML. Eco is being smashed down deep into the yellow and Vet's still into the green. This doesn't feel great for Eco, he's into the red. But his spam has cleared up Vet's spam and is swarming Vet's comm. And Vet is not focusing the comm which he needs to be focusing. Stealth now up for Brony which will protect some of his spam boat. That, he's into the red, Vet is into the red, and that means that the com bomb will kill them both. Boom! We have a draw between Eco and Vet in the bottom left. Meanwhile, here on the right, Brony has been scouted, and so he's under fire again. I think that there's still enough for Sea Star to hold. We'll see about it in just a moment and TMDs are being put up to defend. This mix was also taken out by the TML. Back to single screen. So we have Lax here pushing in with both Com and Spam and he's got Gun Nano against Dawn who is Gun alone, has less Spam and is falling back. Now we can see on the minimap that Brony has given Vet's old base to Dawn so that he can actually contribute because that was Don's base. So look at it, this is brutal. However, the shields are down for Sea Star in the Sparky base and the creep advances. But he's building more shields to protect. Don is falling back quite far and he's now got nothing with which to counter this huge push of Lax. But Lax has sold up to take out the eco and that might give Dawn and Brony a chance to respond. I can see some engines heading forward here and they're looking set to build a line of PDs so that Dawn can retreat to them. Now with more shields and stealth the fight continues but again Brony breaks through as his wave of PDs creeps forward. Lax is pushing in again now that he's got engineers consolidating this base for him. The first couple of PDs have gone up though and the spam is leading rather than the comm which I think is a mistake and Lax consolidates back a bit as Dunn's comm escapes.
the, the TML is contributing to the defense, taking out PDs, and more T2 PDs are going up. But a factory is out, one of the shields is out. Sea Star is having trouble holding, but the amount of damage it's done and the amount of resource that Brony has had to sink into defending is immense. Last comes forward. There are now a decent number of T2 PDs and they're firing but the T2 PDs are pretty much the only defense and I don't think that they're going to hold. Brony brings in Vothels. But Lax has some flak in there and the Vothels are driven away. I mean, what can Brony do about this? Well, that's what Brony does about this. He resigns. If I were him, I would have waited just a little longer. I would have walked by common here to do some damage. And maybe even take out Laxata. But Roni has resigned, leaving it Don Gringo against the world. Quick check down here, where Seastar, having inherited Eco's units, is pushing in. But not only are there PDs here, there are also Ilshis here, and Ilshis beat Rhinos if properly micro. Neither side seems to be doing much in the way of micro here, but there are Rhinos on each side, there are Ilshis, and in combination with the PD, that push from Seastar is held back but we have bricks out for the dawn and those bricks will be enough to see off Lax but and there are pings saying go in Vet's still around he is watching from the side lines from the penalty box if you will In fact, Dunn's got a decent number of bricks, and in combination with these hoplites... Were those Ilshis or hoplites? I assume they were Ilshis, but they were actually hoplites, so I was telling gigantic lies. Still, the hoplites were not properly micro, but nor were the rhinos, so in combination with the other rhinos, they still won. In come the bricks. Lax has shields, both static and mobile, and he's putting up PD. But I think there's enough here to break this position. And there are more bricks following them in all the time. This has become a bit of a stalemate because Don hasn't had the APM to fight it off. But there isn't really any significant work being done by the Sparkies to capitalise on that. Lax fighting boldly against the bricks, he's not just running away, he's making a tactical withdrawal. But Vothu gunships come in to join the fun, and this might mean that Lax is under threat. He has a few inties. Is there any anti-air from Dawn to respond? Well, Lax is down below half health. More inties coming in from Lax, and the bricks aren't chasing fast enough, so I think that Lax is going to escape. He's deep into the yellow, but he's alive. And Don has a strat and a couple of ASFs out. But so does Seastar in the at least in the ASF front. What's Don going to do with those with that strat? There's a lot of eco that he could probably pick up quite safely here. Strat, 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 and because, of course, Don is now hugely behind on Eco. We haven't talked about Eco much, but what is there to say? He's on less than half the Eco of a hot team. And so, coming back from this is going to be a big ask. But, he's been doing well in production of T3 units. He's still got the middle from which to build a fire base, like maybe a TML or T2 Arty here. Could get work done. And, of course, he's got this strat. Why is this strat just sitting around doing nothing? I was saying you can get units across mid, and indeed you can. That looks a bit silly, but that loyalist is managing to find this sneaky little path across the nose of the cow. That strat is still waiting. What's it waiting for? This, this scout, perhaps? If it had just gone for Lax's cop, it could probably have killed him.
but no such luck. And now there's quite a big force with stealth cover coming up around the flank. And there are loyalists being produced quite fast by Dawn. This strat is a waste. It hasn't done anything, it's just been sitting there letting Sea Star build up ASFs. Finally it comes in, but it's getting pings. And the ASF swoop on it. It drops a bomb. Where's the bomb going? It does get a nice hit there on power and air. And was that the Air HQ? Air Factory, Air Factory, Air Factory. I think that might have been the Air HQ, in which case, nice pickup. But this is where we have to be looking. That raid has come in from Sea Star, but there's suddenly a huge horde of loyalists, as if springing from nowhere for the dawn. And it pushes the raid back with only the loss of a couple of mexes. They might lose two mexes. There's... Yes, they do lose two mexes, but even so. That was a pretty good defence, and it's left a decent heap of reclaim that Don can pick up, so... If Don's able to go and pick that up, I think that'll be pretty nice. He sends a couple of Nothers to raid this, um, Sparky base. Which is beginning to creep forward again. I think he just needs TMLs and Artie here, rather than trying to creep and knock this out. There was an attempt to mass some T1 bombers here, but the Don's ASFs sweep it up pretty easily. Now that force of loyalists we were talking about is counter-pushing round here. And there's a lot of it, that's a lot of firepower in there. But he's going to have to be quick, because we're beginning to see T3 units coming up for Sea Star. There's already a few in there. And when he sees this mass of loyalists, Sea Star will probably want to switch into bricks. If these guys break through, this could be an epic flanking maneuver, though, because these guys haven't caught up yet. And if he can wipe this force before these guys catch up... Oh, I don't like this micro from Dawn. I know he's got a lot to concentrate on and I wouldn't do any better, but I still don't like it. He's still going to be fighting here when these boys roll in. And I think some of these losses for Dawn are unnecessary. Meanwhile, we have a big push coming in here from Lax, but this is all T1. And... There should be enough with these point defences and these hot plies to shoot this off without a problem. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. I think this is where the action is, or where the action should be, if Dunn were doing what he should be and pushing with his force. And instead he's caught standing still at a bad angle and nicely surrounded by Sea Star, who picks up quite a few free kills there. But Dunn's pushing back. Still, there's quite a mass of loyalists for Sea Star, and we are now seeing bricks coming in as well for the hot team, so I think Don might have missed his chance there. Over here the hot plates are being microed back and the T2 point defences are picking up and there are rhinos coming out. Overall that's not going to get anywhere from Lax. And hot team still with twice the Don's eco, but are they going to be able to convert it into power on the field? Because I am still seeing decent amounts of units being produced by Don. What is Sea Star actually doing with his vast heap of eco? That said, Lax's eco is not bad either. What's he doing with it? He's get, got T3 production, but he isn't really using it yet. Let's have a quick eco check. He's not spending the eco. He's got a huge amount to store, but he's not spending it. Sea Star also needs to be spending more. Whereas the Don's balance is beautiful, so I much prefer the balance from the Don than I do from the hot team.
And, of course, Eco Player, who's now dead, we saw him recently is focusing too much on Eco and too little production, spoilers, in that nice little naval battle where he found himself with a nice big Eco but nothing to stop the Navy charging into his base. And is that another sparky drop I see out from Sea Star? Where is that going? Laxico now going crazy. He's still got an excess and needs to spend it. I'm sure he'll be able to in time because he's got so much buffer, but Eco in your buffer is less good than Eco as mass on the field. <coughs> and Sea Star starts a monkey. Come on, where's he going with those sparkies? And where is his monkey? I haven't seen it yet. Ah, here it is. So he's going to be going for a flanking manoeuvre. And he's massing his units here. Dunn's massing his units here. Dunn now has bricks too. And we may be looking at a counter push. Because there isn't a great deal here to stop it yet. But there are bricks sneaking over this sneaky little passage we spoke about earlier. Look at that. That's pretty cheeky, isn't it? Meanwhile, the sparky drop comes out. As if one sparky drop weren't enough, now we've got two. And they're landing here on the mid plateau and they're doing exactly the same thing as before. They've got a shield queued up for the moment that they land. I do enjoy that the way that you can use transports, queue a unit to do something as soon as it comes with the transports. And we have a swarm of farms coming in, but the sparkies have their own little guns. Will they be quick enough? They stop building the shields and they reclaim the attacking farms. Love the use of the reclaim there rather than the guns and now they can finish the shield at leisure, which they do. And this one PD and this one factory won't be enough to stop it as the T2 point defence goes up. And with a sparky drop and some quick fire reclaim, Sea Star is going to take the plateau. Don hasn't pushed and that disappoints me because I think he could have managed it if he'd pushed in before those before those bricks had made it across but now there's a big army here for Sea Star the monkey's finished and is on its way I don't think the dawn is going to survive and Lax also has fire coming out from this forward fire base he's got Artie he's got tactical missiles, I thought I saw a couple firing and I mean they're getting some work done this whole force from the dawn is pushing up around here ready to take on this firebase and that is enough to take the firebase but here's the thing he doesn't know what's coming he has no idea the monkey is there because the monkey is projecting a stealth field Sea Star proving conclusively that he has the air advantage there. And the Don is moving forward. The RT is firing and there's a decent amount of T2 PD here, but I think that Lax is showing the same issue that Eco showed, as I was mentioning last game. He's got too much eco and not enough to stop the actual army. Come on, Don, you know you can do it. We're obviously completely impartial here, but it's nice to see the underdog making a, a comeback. But his air force has spotted the monkey and he is worried. 
Now he's got enough here to finish this off. Look at this, look at this beautiful charge. But he is getting worried and he's issued a recall move to bring the these units back to try and face the monkey. I think that's a mistake. They're not going to be there by the time the monkey is. He's got a decent amount of production here. He's built an anti-nuke, which, which is nice in general, but he probably needed to scout to see if it would need it because he's got so much he needs to spend his limited eco on. But these support units for Seastar are trickling in. And these boys are just still too far away, so he needed to carry on with them and just charge that his base. He's got a decent amount of T2PD, but the monkey can just go to town on the eco up here. I mean, there's more PD, but it's not enough, and the monkey eats it up while still in the green. And the Dawn is advancing to fight in person. Is this a carefully calculated move, or is this just suicide? We don't know. Seastar finishes another monkey. Looks like it's not suicide, he's not just charging in head first. And finally, the rest of his force arrives as he moves back to lure the monkey into the line of PD. His com is Pung. And the monkey is falling back. We have point defences going up here for the monkey to fall back to, which is an interesting touch from Seastar. But he's losing a lot of his spam, leaving the monkey as the only offensive unit. And suddenly there's quite a lot from the Don here, which might be enough to hurt the monkey. Bricks coming in from Sea Star, but that's a lot of bricks from the Don. But the Don regroups, and the monkey comes in again for the attack. The Don starts work on a chicken, but I feel that might be a bit too little, a bit too late. Chicken does beat Monkey though, so if he can finish it fast enough, if he can throw his whole eco into it. And the Monkey is under attack, but we have to go to split screen here, because do you see what I see in the top? Here's the Monkey under fire from the Don, and it's down into the red. But Lax is taking advantage of all Don's attack force being here and pushing around the top with T3 and a bit of T1 support. But it's trickling, I don't like that. There may be enough to defend, there's nothing in defence but it gets quickly shot down. The monkey is deep into the red, but the Don is forced to retreat as he runs out of stuff and he started a monkey instead of the chicken. And he's focusing on it as much as he can, but it has to finish to be worth anything and this monkey might push in in time. With four vets, it's regenerating pretty fast. Over here, Lax is trickling, and these point defences are getting work done. There are shields here, and there, there's a lot of point defences there. I don't think this is actually going to get anything done from Lax, but... Sea Star's pushing in with the monkey, which has regenerated the yellow. And now there's another monkey, a fresh and clean monkey, pushing in. And Don's barely even halfway, barely even a third of the way with his monkey. 4,000 hit points left on the first monkey, but the second monkey makes it in. And the first monkey retreats, leaving the second monkey to clear up, and there's just nothing to fight with anymore. Over here, I think that Lax, despite the amount of T3, is being held back, so let's return to single screen. And just in time, because do you see what I see? I see a large wave of strats coming in from Seastar there, taking advantage of his undisputed air domination, and I think Don has spotted them because he's heading for the shield, but that's a lot of strats. The Sam's fire, but the strats get their bombs off. And boom, Don Gringo is taken out at 34 minutes after a very brave defence. Despite his lack of eco, he was doing he was doing pretty well there. 
what is there to say other than to reiterate our love for Sparkies? So, where could Don have come back from that huge Sparky push? I think there were a couple of times when had he just gone in with the huge forces of T3 he had, he could have done enough damage to turn it around, give him a way back in. Perhaps a cheeky brick drop or two around the back might have done it. But, he didn't do it. And I just want you to give me all your love for Sparkies in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.